This is your host, Fred Hart, and you have reached the Gear Obsession channel again, and I appreciate it. In this episode, I will be doing my long-term review, if you consider it a couple of months of carrying it, a long-term review. I know some of you think differently, but that's what I'm going to consider my long-term review, of the Leatherman Expanse Model E33TX. Now before we get started, I'd like to go over the specs really quick, since this is, this is my official review of this knife. The blade steel is 154CM. That's a very high quality steel found in the higher end uh, models of knives of all different companies. It, it's, a, it's a modern uh, high carbon steel that's uh, pretty strong. The Knife also has a bunch of tools. You know, it's a it's a leather mitt. It's sort of a, a multi tool that sort of looks more like a knife, as opposed to a multi tool that has a knife. Now we have a Phillips screwdriver. It does not lock into place. It just comes open and, and closes simply. It also has a quarter inch flathead screwdriver right here. And let me close the blade and you can see that this also does not lock into place and we also have a carabiner which can double as a bottle opener now there's a little trick to this once you open it the first time if you did read the instructions me you you can't close it it doesn't close like the screwdrivers did you have to press it in and then you can fold it back in Let's take a look at the scales. The scales um, appear at, at first glance to be half stainless steel, half glass filled nylon, when in fact the whole scale is glass filled nylon and then it's covered with a very thin layer uh, or veneer of stainless steel. So if you were to look inside, the, the whole scale inside is plastic. So it's not actually metal all the way through there. The knife also has something called a blade launcher, so instead of just using this rather skimpy um, thumb stud, which, which I'm not a fan of, you can also use this blade launcher or kicker or whatever you like to call it, and it'll come right out. The, uh, just looking at my notes here, the clip, which looks really strong, cannot be moved anywhere else on the knife but it can be removed if you take out these three screws which are Torx screws. This knife does come with a 25 year warranty which is a good thing and we'll get into that here shortly. Uh, measurements of this knife is 3.94 inches closed and the blade is 2.6 inches and the total weight is a very light considering everything that's in here 3.75 ounces it is kind of a thick knife but you gotta remember this is sort of a multi-tool slash knife so now that we went over the specs the boring part I am going to lay the knife down on the table here and I'm gonna bring you in and I want to talk about some specifics so one of the first real issues I had with this knife, which became evident right when I was doing the unboxing, was that the blade was not locking up properly once it came out. What I was doing was I opened it up about that easy and I was able to fold it right back. It did not lock. Now after carrying it for a couple of months and doing some minor modification with this file, which I'll show you in a minute, it does lock up better, but it still does not lock up well. Let me show you how that liner, here's the liner, watch how much it flips out or comes behind the blade to lock up if I do it easy. I want to make sure I keep this in focus. Okay, see how it barely moved over? Maybe half of this very thin liner is actually behind that blade locking it up. That is absolutely unacceptable. I'm going to tell you right now this knife in in this review gets one out of ten. That's the, the worst I can I give anything. One out of ten because that's a serious safety issue for it to only 
you know, lock up like that. Now, if I go really fast and hard there, <laughs> it um, does almost lock up properly. It's still not totally there. you got to remember that it's locking up back here on the lighter. It's still not completely behind the blade. So still unacceptable. And it only does this now because after, you know, opening the blade and banging it down to try to get this to wear down a little bit more and moving the liner purposefully back and forth. And another thing that I did was once I opened this up, I can move this kicker over here. I went ahead and it's hard to do this around the, uh, the camera here is I filed this area right here down with this file so that the blade can come back a little bit further to try to give this more of a chance to get behind the blade once it's fully open. So from a safety standpoint it's absolutely unacceptable. I would recommend if you got a knife like this to return it. It does have a 25 year warranty. It definitely would have needed to be returned and repaired. Now with that aside, again, I wanted to point out, see, it's all polymer in there, and it's only covered by a thin veneer of metal on the outside. Now, another issue is, when I fold this knife in, you can see that the blade is hitting the folded carabiner in there. So, eventually, there might be some wear showing up on that tip there, and that's uh, another issue with it. You can see it just closes up behind there like that. Don't like that. Now, and this is American made. This is really pissing me off that a $44 knife from the United States is made like this. Look at this, how they hollow ground the quarter inch screwdriver. The machining is very poor. It's not even. You can see it looks like a two-year-old did the machining on this side. And if you look really close, you can see a lot of the machining, molding, the mold marks on this tool. Let's look at the Phillips, see if it looks any better. And you can see molding marks. You know, look at that seam right there. That's poor quality in my book. That is pretty good. At least it's not MIM. <laughs> a MIM part, but it's not much better. Looks like pot metal. Pot metal mold. <laughs> and Carabina has mold marks right there. Just not very impressive at all. Another issue is that it, it's hard to hear, but there is slight movement back and forth here between the two scales now. And another issue is that the blade no longer rests on the um, scale here. You can hear it when I'm tapping it. It's starting to bend outwards, and this is only after two months of carry. So it's not resting tightly against the side of the scale anymore, either. So, the thumb stud is anemic, it's tiny. The only good thing about it is there's a cut out there to really help get your thumb behind it, but it's still hard. And, by the way, that's not your phone making that noise, it's mine. Let me move it away from the speaker. So, if it wasn't for that cut out, you wouldn't even be able to get your thumb there behind that thumb stud so it's a good thing it has this kicker which I like the design of this launcher here I do like that it's one of the few things I like about this knife besides having the tools but the tools are made like garbage this is a $44 knife I would expect a little bit more from an American made $44 knife I've seen Chinese tools made better than this this is why I made that one smart crack on my last video about Chinese knives really starting to be made better than the American knives in the same price range. Specifically that Sogzilla, just <laughs> that Sogzilla which costs less than this appears to be made better. So um, I'm really disappointed with uh, this Leatherman tool. 
I'm happy with that Leatherman Wave I got. I don't think I've reviewed that yet, so I shouldn't say anything yet. But, um, you know, that tool appears to be made very well, but this does not. So, my final assessment of this is 1 out of 10 stars. So again, to reiterate, this knife has been a total disappointment. And again, that's the Leatherman Expanse E33TX. And if you're a Leatherman fan, I, I really ap apologize if you didn't like this review. Maybe I got a lemon, but, you know, there there are some um, crafts, uh, craftsmen, uh, trying to find craftsmanship issues I have with this, which I'm pretty sure are across the whole line uh, of, of this particular model. So... I don't hate Leatherman. I do have other Leatherman knives that I like, and I do have one other one I don't like, so they're sort of hit and miss with me. So, with that said, um, I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Gear Obsession channel. I know there's not as much excitement and drama here on this boring channel as there is on the rest of the uh, gun channels right now. I do want to say one thing without saying any names about anything, but I'm sure you all know what I'm talking about. And that is that you think about what's being said out there as far as individuals and just look at the facts. Okay? And I notice that a lot of folks are drawing lines between those facts and trying to draw conclusions. And um, I myself, along with others, have jumped to conclusions and ended up putting their foot in their mouth. So it, it's a good idea just to, you know, look at the facts as they come and eventually um, they'll come out and then you can find out what really is going on. I, I don't want to state names or anything like that, but I mean, just, uh, just, you know, try to keep it cool, keep it civil. It's YouTube. There's lots of drama. That's what makes YouTube great, by the way. YouTube is fun. They can make a soap opera out of it. They can make a show out of it. You know, if you're a big producer out in California looking for a new show to do, let me tell you. <laughs> uh, a YouTube-based show of some sort would be um, probably pretty cool and you'd probably get a lot of fans. So, with that said... Thank you very much for stopping by the Gear Obsession channel again. I appreciate every friend, subscriber, and viewer um, that keeps on coming back. So, with that, 